any race he starts, he is the favourite. He also races a Honda Integra pretty rapidly uh, on occasion too, in a uh, slightly lower specification. That's a two-litre normally aspirated car, but uh, he is such a, um, a, a top driver and a really nice guy as well. And he, as I said, he does genuinely keep track of all of these race wins that he's uh, managed to gather over the years many of them in recent times at the wheel of that escort which was uh, written off near enough in a huge accident here a few years ago pretty much right where his car is parked now it ended up in the pit wall uh, not at the start of a race but halfway through it he had contact with another car speared him into the pit wall it was a humongous accident and uh, rod was looking to get away with it himself the car was certainly very second hand and he's worked hard to repair it and uh, it's still obviously capable of winning races because he did win this morning uh, in the first race by 2.7 seconds over Paul Watson, who's got the orange, black and blue BMW alongside him, one of several BMWs in the field. Although there were rather more of them at the front of the field in race one than there are now. They've sort of been taken over by the Honda Civic Brigade, haven't they? We've got three Civics uh, up there near the Sharp and Bradley Lane starts fourth, Dave Hutchins fifth and Vic Hope sixth. And they were all battling away in the previous race, along with uh, Nick Proudlock in that beautiful Mark 1 Ford Escort. Uh, the white and green BMW you can see going through the picture there. That's number 78, Ronan Bradley. He'll start 16th, but was second on the grid for race one. He's the one I said had a spin on the green flag lap and a couple of moments in the race. I think he went off at least twice in the race, but when he's not pointing the wrong way, that car is capable of winning, so um, whether he can do that from 16th is perhaps a bit doubtful, but strange things have happened. Today, even strange things have happened. Uh, Paul Sheard, another one to keep an eye out for, the number 99 Mark 4 Ford. Uh, Ford MX-5, Mazda MX-5. How long have I been commentating on Mazda MX-5? Uh, that is the Mark IV car, which I haven't had the pleasure of commentating on all that much, though. There is no series as of yet for the Mark IV in the UK. Mark IVs and Mark III's well represented here this weekend, uh, not just in these races, but in the BRSCC Championships. There is an invitational class uh, for this weekend only uh, for the MX-5s, because obviously with the two MX-5 championships being on the bill. Lots of drivers from those championships wanted to get some extra track time with the CMMC, so they granted them permission to race, gave them a separate class all of their own. Uh, it was a class that was won by Paul Sheard in the previous race from George Grant and Chris Richardson in a pair of Mark III MX-5s, and they're all set to do battle again over uh, the final non-Formula Ford race of the festival. It's a 20-minute race for the Classic and Modern Motorsport Club, five minutes longer than the first one as the sun starts to shine down on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. The lights go out, we're away in racing, and Rob Burley gets the lead, or holds the lead, I should say, uh, into the first corner. Look at Nick Proudlock in the Mark 1 Escort coming around the outside, but it's Paul Watson that goes around the outside of the Escort, the Ford um, Escort WRC, that is, a Rob Burley for the lead as they go through Paddock. Burley's got the inside line into Druids, though, and with four-wheel drive advantage, will be able to find the traction, you'd imagine, off the corner, although Watson is coming back at him as they come down the hill. Look at that, they are side-by-side side into the left-hander. Burley hangs on, then, as they turn through... Graham Hill, Proudlock in amongst the uh, the Honda Civics there, trying to get up the inside of Vic Hope, but uh, as he does so, he's slow on the exit. Oh, and there's a car off there. Is that Chris Richardson again? It is, isn't it? Chris Richardson's been off more times than he's been on, it seems, today. It's been a, a pretty challenging day in these races and the Super Cup races, but he's uh, rejoined the track. I think he did hit the barriers that time, though, coming out of Druids. Race leaders then come out of clearways towards the end of lap number one, and uh, it is going to be... Rod Burley, who has the race lead. Look at this going on behind. Now, this is uh, Ronan Bradley in here somewhere. I'll forgive you if you can't see him. Uh, but Ronan Bradley in that BMW has just got himself ahead um, of the BMW with whom he shared the front row for race one. John Devereaux, I believe, is now at the wheel. There he goes with Devereaux on the inside in the black BMW. And... Uh, it is uh, Ronan Bradley in the white and green one. Those two both should be a lot further up the order. So too should that car, actually, the uh, VW Scirocco, uh, which is... Uh, it had some sort of a mechanical drama in the previous race. Steve Dan at the wheel of number 34. Looks like it's back up to speed again now because it is... Um, it's, uh, it's got its way into uh, ninth place at the start of this uh, second lap. Maybe some of the MX-5s through um, Graham Hill Bend. And, uh, Nick Proudlock still dicing away with Honda Civics. Whoa, that was close. And uh, the uh, 49 car of um, 
Dave Hutchins. Thought about going up the inside, and Steve Dan does more than think about it. He gets the VW Scirocco past the pair of them as they uh, come off the corner. There's George Grant coming through in his MX-5, a Dyson pair of cars in front of him, one of which is the Fiesta number 225 of Nick Wall. He's on the outside, I think, and on the inside uh, is a BMW. That is the 55 BMW of Lawrence Squires. He started ninth. Squires on the inside line. Now, there goes Steve Dan going up the inside of Vic Hope. And Vic Hope, in the end, not much he could do to stop that. Proud lock right around the outside in that Escort. It's uh, the definition of a giant killing car, that, isn't it? Because it is going up against cars with which it should not be able to compete. And yet it is. Oh, and, well, that is the rather familiar side, I'm afraid, of Ronan Bradley going the wrong way. He spun there in race one, and he spun there again in race two. He may have glanced the barriers, but uh, we've seen this movie before, haven't we? Of that number 78 BMW reversing down the hill, trying to find some traction on the wet grass. Uh, Nick Proudlock's uh, latest playmate is the VW Golf, which is uh, being driven, uh, it's the number 144 car being driven by Ken Hunt, and Hunt is coming through from uh, a slightly slow start to the race, I think, and uh, should get past crowd lock pretty easily in a straight line but the uh, marble escort is uh, holding its own through the corners quite nicely uh, i can tell you that uh Ronan Bradley has just rejoined the track right in front of Rod Burley, but Burley's going to put a lap on him as they go down the back straight. Burley still leading by three seconds, 59.695 for Burley last time, the first sub-60 second lap. Uh, now we've got uh, the BMW there, haven't we, which is the 63... No, 69 car, sorry, uh, which was just going through. That's Mike Chittenden, although it might actually be John Devereaux in the car for this race, we're not entirely sure, uh, but uh, the car that uh, Chittenden we think was driving in race one has now negotiated the Civics. The, the golf of um, Hunt, though, still cannot complete this manoeuvre on Nick Proudlock, who is uh, hanging on grimly in the Escort, and then the two Civics in front, Hutchins and Vic Hope, are um, going wheel-to-wheel -wheel virtually as they come out of Clearways and Clark Curve. We're nearly five minutes into this race, and a 4.7 second cushion now held by Rod Burley after another new fastest lap. Up the inside goes Hutchins. That's for seventh place against the other Honda Civic. The lead Honda Civic um, is Brad Lane in now fifth place because Steve Dan has got past him in the Scirocco. So the VW Scirocco gaining ground. Paul Sheard has now caught this group. Now, Paul was racing this lot in race one, so he's now back to where he should be, in essence. He's racing against the cars that he'd expect to be racing with. And... Uh, goes around the outside of Nick Proudlock there. It's one of the easier passes anyone's made on Proudlock all day. Uh, up at the um, braking zone at Druids. Martin Plowman there in the background. Look, racing with uh, one of the BMWs. That's, I think, Ken Angel's uh, 37 BMW that Martin is uh, trying to overtake. He's just overtaken him and then ran straight onto the grass coming out of Graham Hill Bend as Paul Sheard now tries to do something about the Honda Civic ahead of him. This, the one of Vic Hope. Yes, Vic Hope number five, who's fading a little bit now at this part of the race. Oh, had a spin out of Graham Hill for the uh, 87 Mark 1 MX-5 of Ollie Walden. But he's going to get going again just as the leaders went through, that was. As there goes Paul Sheard on the brakes. Look how much later the MX-5 can break for Paddock. And he's on the grippier part of the road. And just tries to skate through. Yes, he's done it. So, Martin's got to have a couple of quick cards. So, Paul Sheard now is chasing down uh, the 144 of Ken Hunt next. And then the 49 of... Uh, Dave Hutchins, so it's the, the Golf first, then another of these pesky Honda Civics. Uh, and then he's got about nine seconds to catch Brad Lane, so I think unless others fall off the road, seventh place is as good as it should get for Paul Sheard, but I think he's probably got the speed to pass these two. And they uh, head up to the far end of the circuit then. As we tick towards half race distance now, Rod Burley five seconds ahead of um, Paul Watson. So that lead gap is doing exactly what it did in race one. It's it's shot up to about four or five seconds pretty quickly. And then when Rod Burley catches traffic, it seems to sort of stabilise a bit. And in what we saw in the previous race is that in the second half of the race, Watson was quicker than Burley. Um, but didn't quite have time to catch him. Now, he was about five or six seconds back at the time at which he took second place in race one as well, so the gap is much the same. We could be on for a bit of a repeat here, as we saw in the first race, in which case Burley, you'd imagine, will hang on because he's, uh, we know he's um, 
he had the pace and had the time in hand in race one to claim the victory. But changing further back, uh, the 43 of Joe Wilmos just got ahead of 127. Dominic Ryan, that's for 17th place. And uh, one of the invitational Mark 5s going through. There are multiple classes represented in the field. There are um, about six or seven within the CMMC portion of the race. And then the Mazda Invitation class, which, as you can see, is being led by Paul Sheard, as he now tries to get up the inside of uh, Ken Hunt's VW Golf with no success at clearways. George Grant second of the MX-5s, Martin Plowman third, then Wilmot, Robinson and Richardson. But uh, in the CMMC classes, Rod Burley is leading in Class A, leading overall, of course. Um, Paul Watson is leading Class B and second overall. And uh, Martin Scott is leading Class C and he's third overall. Uh, then Class D is being led by the uh, Hunt VW, which is in the same class, actually, as Nick Proudlock's uh, Part 1 Escort, somehow. Uh, and then you've got the uh, Tin Tops and the Tin top class uh, being led by the sixth place car now, Brad Lane, because uh, Chittenden has got ahead now of Lane in the uh, BMW. But that's not the class position, but was for fifth place outright. There are two tip top classes, actually. There's the T2 class and then the slightly slower uh, T1s, but Ken Angel is uh, pretty much the only car in that class, and he's uh, therefore leading it in 16th place in his uh, BMW E36 328i Coupe. That's Dave Hutchins, started the race fifth. He's currently sat in seventh place. And that is Paul Sheard, who's properly up the inside of the VW this time. In fact, he's almost into the side of the VW as the cars squirreled around under acceleration there. Gets in the slipstream, or tries to, as they come across the start-finish line. The Golf is much better in a straight line, but it's so much heavier. Look at that. That Mazda MX-5 just stops on a dime, and it's uh, so spectacular to watch Paul Sheard racing a, a Mazda MX-5 because you can guarantee he will extract the absolute maximum from it. Uh, there's a good battle uh, starting to develop for third here, isn't there? The 45 um, BMW of Martin Scott's been caught by Steve Dan Scirocco, and Dan is bringing with him um, Chittenden. So there is the leader, there is second place, but in the background should be the third place battle. It's just gone across, so it's just about to go across the line, actually. It was Scott from Dan from Chittenden. There they go. And it's now... Dan, I think, from Scott from Chittenden. Yes, Dan is now third, and Chittenden's going to try and take fourth place away from the blue and orange BMW. Ooh, <laughs> Neil gets into the back of it through Paddock. They've also got traffic. Uh, 96 is Chris Richardson in the uh, Mazda MX-5 that went off earlier on. And Chittenden all oh, runs a bit wide there, trying to go around the outside of the Martin Scott BMW, and that might work, because he's got the inside now for Graham Hill Bend. And he is going to take that uh, fourth place away, and he's been lapping quicker than uh, Steve Dan in front of him. So, wouldn't bet against seeing that black BMW on the podium here by the end of the race. It um, got on the podium, of course, in third place in race one. Arguably could have been second if uh, that mistake hadn't been made at the end of the race. Uh, back to my theory about the leaders, by the way, exactly the same thing is happening as in race one. Paul Watson is now quite a bit quicker than Rod Burley. He's pulled that gap down from over five seconds to 3.2 now. And uh, Watson on the previous lap was 1.1 seconds faster than Burley. So uh, he's not quite with him yet, but that is coming down more rapidly than it did at any point in race one. So I'm not convinced Rod Burley has got this all in hand, but uh, neither, neither, neither has Steve Dan in uh, third place either, because uh, Mike Chittenden is, or John Devereaux, as we think it now might be, is uh, in the heart attack run BMW, closing in on him. Still Paul Shear leading of the MX-5. Sheard is eighth overall now, having got past the goal finally as we saw into Paddock, but he's uh, about seven, so, well, seven seconds behind Dave Hutchins, actually. That's doable. He was uh, he was slower than him on the previous lap, though, so maybe not. Third place battle across the start finish line. The lead gap went down by another tenth that time. It's three and a quarter seconds now. Sorry, so beg your pardon, went up by a tenth to 3.2. So Rob Burley responding to the top three head through Paddock. Burley's already heading to, heading to Surtees. He's half a lap ahead of uh, these two, as in fairness is Paul Watson. But I do think that the 69 BMW is going to go through here now. Lots more traffic for Rod Burley to negotiate. Look, he's just gone past Paul Sheard. He's got a couple of the Mark 1 MX-5s ahead of him. That will uh, possibly delay him. 87 is one of them. 
um, which is Ollie Walden. And he's got past both of them, in fact, and one of the Ford Viestas by the time they get to Paddock. Now, Paul Watson's going to catch them at Paddock, and that's going to hold him up rather more than it held up Rod Burley. And uh, no, it's Paul Sheard first, isn't it, that catches them. Then Paul Watson, who might have to take it four wide here into Druids because uh, he's got a road full of lapped cars, which are also in the process of lapping each other. The lead gap, for what it's worth, went out by another three tenths that time, and it will no doubt have gone up again on this lap because look at the, the mess that... Uh, um, Paul Watson just had to dig his way through. Nick Proudlot there is now caught. Uh, oh, yeah, he's pretty much caught back up to the Class D leader, hasn't he? Uh, Ken Hunt. So that would be a fight for the Class victory if he can get past the golf. Rod Burley already looked good for a Class A victory. I don't think there are actually any other Class A cars here this weekend. Paul Watson, though, in the Class B BMW has tried everything to potentially take the fight to Burley, but the gap's gone back out again now. 4.9 seconds. More traffic up ahead, though. This ain't over yet. We've still got over a, th a quarter of the race to go. Six minutes and 40 seconds left in this slightly longer second race of the um, weekend. Now, uh, for third place, Steve Dan is back ahead of Mike Chittenden now. And I'm sure Chittenden was ahead of him a couple of laps ago. In fact, we saw it happen, did we not? So uh, Steve Dan's got the Scirocco back into third place now. <laughs> so um, it's continuing to chop and change behind these two. But when I say behind them, half a minute now behind them. If he carries on at this rate, Rod Burley is almost going to lap the... He should certainly lap the top, the fifth place car, I think, of uh, Martin Scott. Could even start lapping. Uh, Dan and Chittenden if they hold each other up. So on to the 15th lap goes Rod Burley. We got uh, 15 laps in in race one, but of course we had a safety car uh, in the middle of that one. Lead gap 4.1 seconds, came back down again by about three quarters of a second. But again, I think that is traffic more than anything else. Another three back markers for Burley to deal with. He's just got past uh, Dave Hutchins in the... Um, seventh place on the Civic he is a little way behind the um, sixth place Civic of Brad Lane though but he will I think put him a lap down before the race is over dives up the inside of uh, one of uh, Ali Bray's um, very rapid MX-5s that's Joe Wilmot in uh, 18th place, running fifth in the uh, MX5 Inter Invitational class, which is still being led by Paul Sheard. Uh, Paul Sheard is not catching Brad, uh, Dave Hutchins, by the way. That uh, gap's gone out over 10 seconds now, so I was questioning whether he could gain another place, but that doesn't look as though it's going to happen. As with just under five minutes to go, Rod Burley goes through to finish another lap. 4.1 seconds of the cushion. Uh, he pretty much matched Watson that time. In fact, Watson was a few hundred slower. You can see Watson there in amongst the back markers too. Dives up the inside of uh, Will Mott, who, along with Chris Richardson, they both gained a place at the expense of Ken Angel on the previous lap. So Angel's BMW running in the T1 class has fallen to 18th. There is Chris Richardson, who uh, is 16th place now. Martin Plowman, the next guy in front of him, actually, who we haven't really seen in this race, but Martin uh, is 15th under on the Invitational class podium at the moment. For third, incidentally, Chittenden back ahead of Dan now. So Chittenden, uh, there, there he is, right on cue. In the black BMW, he's actually getting away from Steve Dan. In fact, Dan is really fading again. Is this a repeat of the problem he had in race one? Because the VW crossed the line 1.7 seconds behind Chittenden, but he was ahead of Chittenden the lap before, and he's fallen back even further, I think, in the first part of this lap. I don't think all is right. No, the Scirocco is not, a, not accelerating out of the corner. So the VW Scirocco is going to be on its way to the pit lane. That car should be going a lot quicker than that. That's a serious shame for Steve Dan, who doesn't look like he's going to get a race finish out of today. Good glimpse of George Grant going through. There is Dan in the number 34 car. Does it head for the pits? Yep, he's going to head for the pit lane. So Steve Dan out of the race. And uh, a car that absolutely had podium potential. 
is not going to see the chequered flag in either of our classic and modern motorsport club races this weekend. New fastest lap for Rod Burley, a uh, 58.501. And it's getting down towards dry lap time, isn't it? The, the areas under the trees, such as here at Druids, are not going to dry out. But places like Paddock and Graham Hill and maybe Surtees, I think they are going to uh, get dry, pretty dry, by the end of this race. If not by the end of this one, certainly by the end of the final for the Formula Fords, which is coming up after this. If you're tuning in for the Formula Ford Festival final, that is on its way. This race has two and a half minutes to go, and then we will be into our build-up for the big one, the main event of the weekend, 49th Formula 4 Festival final. But uh, this has been a really nice addition to the programme this weekend. Nice to have some sports and saloon cars out there and lots of variety too. Ford Escort leads this race for a, a trio of BMW M3s. Then you've got a couple of Honda Civics, a Mazda MX-5, a VW Golf, a Mark 1 Ford Escort, a Ford Fiesta 150 ST. Whatever takes your fancy, there will probably be at least one example of it out there on the grid. You can see there, Paddock Hill Bend, there is now definitely a decidedly dry line that is forming at uh, the apex, but then as soon as they get into the dip and the trees start to shade the track, it gets wet again. You can see spray being kicked up there, actually, by uh, Martin Scott's BMW as he went offline. All of this is presenting a fascinating uh, quandary for the uh, Formula Fords because those cars, I've been watching them during this race, they're continuing to trickle into the assembly area, uh, which means they will have had to have set their cars up by now, pretty much. They'll have to have decided whether they want to dry or a wet setup. It is not going to rain again now. The sun is really starting to shine quite brightly, and there are no black clouds on the horizon. So if it's not going to rain again, that means that... Um, it could well get um, could well continue getting drier, and therefore those that are on a wet setup for the Formula Ford race are not going to be in the right place. So uh, that will all become clear inside the next 10 minutes or so. But this race is now less than a minute from its conclusion. Rod Burley has just gone through onto what might be the last lap. It might end up being the penultimate lap, depending on how many. Uh, how much uh, time he had left on the clock and the last lap ball is out so we're on to the final lap then of this classic one a classic modern motorsport club race and look at this battle that's going on oh there's contact into druids and that's oh scott with a brilliant bit of car control and a great bit of avoidance by ken angel that was all happening just behind the race leader uh, rob burley who has just got onto the final lap and put a lap on that lot it was um bradley lane and he had caught uh, back up to Martin Scott and was trying to get through and the pair made contact as they went into Druids and that very nearly um, managed to wipe out the completely innocent Ken Angel. Um, Rob Burley avoided all of that, thank goodness, and he is steering the Ford Escort WRC out of the final corner. He engages the uh, two-litre turbocharged engine and blasts across the start-finish line. It's another race victory for Rob Burley at Brands Hatch, and he wins this one by a little more than he did in race one. Second will once again go to Paul Watson, but he's 5.2 seconds adrift this time, with Mike Chitterton due to come home in third, barring any more last lap dramas, such as the one he had in race number one. Fourth place already across the line, has gone Martin Scott. So Burley lapped everybody up to fourth place, up to it including fourth place. So only three cars on the lead lap by the end. Uh, fifth place is um, Bradley Lane. Sixth for Dave Hutchins. Seventh Paul Sheard. Uh, and then the rest about to filter through. In fact, we'll have a look at that top ten now. It was uh, Rob Burley who got the victory by 5.2 seconds over Watson second, Chittenden third, Scott fourth, Lane fifth, Hutchins sheared, Hunt, Proudlock, and uh, the top 10 rounded out by Nick Wall in the 225 uh, Ford Fiesta. Vic Hope was 11th that time, slightly disappointing race for Vic. George Grant has just come across the line in 12th. The class winners, class A won by Rob Burley, class B by Paul Watson, class C by um, Martin Scott. Class D was uh, 144, which was Ken Hunt, and then in uh, the Invitational class, won by Paul Sheard, and then in the Tin Tops, T2 was won by Brad Lane, and T1, as was never really in doubt, won by Ken Angel, although it was in doubt on the last lap, because he very nearly didn't make it back to the chequered flag. 